Welcome to Power World. This is a game I've been really excited about since the first trailers came out a couple of years ago now. It's a game which has you washed up on some deserted beach with what seems to be no memory of how you got there or how this world even works. You get this small cryptic cutscene at the start of the game to let you know there's a story to be told here, but the game doesn't actually tell you it's your story to tell. In this true crafting survival game, you are in charge of your own story. You're in this mysterious world with these creatures called pals. They can be captured for you to either enslave and have as workers, or used to fight by your side to become one of the strongest people in the whole island. And with everyone playing the game the way it's meant to be played, I thought, can you beat Pal World without any pals? So with that in mind, I set myself some rules. The rules are I'm not allowed to catch any pals in this playthrough, I'm playing on the hardest difficulty without any custom slider modifications, I've got 30 in-game days to progress as far as possible, and I'm not allowed to use any exploit or glitches to progress my world. And with that in mind, I jump straight into the character customization because if I'm spending 30 in-game days looking at something, I at least want to make it something relatively pretty. And with that, we jump straight into the windswept hills. On day one of our adventure, I got a, just a quick feel for the controls of this game and then set foot outside to be greeted by the level 30 plus mammoth. So with me being in this game for less than five minutes, I was not about to start making that my first encounter, so moved swiftly on and got the first fast travel location. From that, there was a person sat to the right of us, so I had a quick chat with them, leveled up to level two, and they gave us some wood to make our first primitive workbench, so that's the next thing that I did. And as soon as I had a look through the workbench menu, I saw that we could make a club, so I started crafting my first wooden club of the run and instantly went to go punch a chicken in the face with it. After taking the chicken meat and its unborn children, I picked up the fruit which was surrounding me and went back to collecting stone and wood to be able to craft some more. I went into the technology menu and learned everything I could and started making my first pal sphere as the run. Don't worry, I did go straight back to domestic violence afterwards, um, but as you're about to see, it didn't go too well for me. After respawning, I noticed the person hadn't regained any health. So I quickly rushed over, picked my club back up, and continued with my domestic violence, and hoped for the best that I wouldn't get headshot again straight away. But with me getting them down to low health, I threw my pal sphere, and weirdly, they went into the ball. So with my 12% luck, I managed to catch a person. After this, I knew I had to escape the police, but I did definitely run straight into them. Uh, this screen is gonna get old, I promise you. The reason I had done this is humans are not classed as pals in this game, so therefore they are actually exempt from the rules, because the rules are I'm not allowed to capture any pals. So with this, I could start my own human trafficking ring. After this, I started making my first stone pickaxe and hatchet of the run, went and mined some more materials, and went to get into a little bit more mischief. I explored around some more and found one of these cards that tells you the story of someone that was here before you. I then looted up some chests and continued on my way. We started travelling down the hill and I started to hear a strange noise I haven't heard before and it was my first shiny pal of the run. With me not being able to capture this though, I decided to engage it in combat. I had fought a few of these further up the hill, but this was starting to become a more difficult fight than I anticipated, as my human companion was already running low on health. Due to this, I started to focus on the small lamb ball to hopefully give us an edge. This was sadly though when I realised that the shinies have special abilities, as I was gunned down with a hydro pump to the face. After dying to this shiny lamb ball, I returned to the area to find it was gone, so I took my gear back and took revenge on his brethren, even if they had other ideas. 
I continued this fighting late into the night and trying to level up as much as possible, but the world had other ideas for me instead. And sadly, the ideas didn't stop there. But I persevered, and with this we went into the dawn of day two. For the rest of the evening, I stuck with the chickens, cats and lambs of the world, and actually had managed to get myself to level four, and was becoming a lot stronger in the game. My only issue by this point is my human companion seemed to have started gaining some form of bloodlust or death wish as it started fights with the enemies I just wasn't equipped to fight yet. So it did leave me having to uh, evade and try and escape from as many fights as possible, but after this had carried on throughout most of the morning, I did manage to get to level 5 though and decided it was time to get a home base down. After building the essentials, I decided to continue mining some trees and some stone for the day. I even built myself a bed which I was never going to use. I did continue doing this late into the evening though. After I'd crafted myself a bow and some arrows, I decided it was time to try it out on the local sleeping pals. And after I ran out of arrows, I went home to begin prepping for day three. For the start of day 3 I started travelling down the hill and continued to gain some more experience as I managed to hit level 6. We ran into a level 38 Mamarest, which we'll remember for later, and continued downwards until we ran into our second fast travel point of the run. There were also some castle ruins nearby and also a small red chest which we need a copper key for so we'll have to come back to this for later. But at the castle ruins there was my next human of the run, so I promptly started violence and threw my balls at his face and hoped for the best. After capturing this villager I continued to try to escape the police, but it went as well as it did the time before. I, I did promise you the screen was going to get old. After returning back to where I just died, I picked up my companions and all of my items and thought I'd try fighting out the enemies that had given me a hard time a couple of nights before. The story was still the same, I was too underleveled. I did too little damage to be able to kill these creatures, so I returned one last time and decided to spend the rest of this evening sticking to the weaker enemies that I know I'd have an easier time with. With this, it was the start of day 4 where I continued fighting the weaker enemies and then proceeded back to base to get some more wood and some stone to craft some more arrows. I also then started crafting my first shield of the run, but it was also going to be my last shield of the run and I'll touch on that point in a few days time, but I then decided I was gonna go fight that Mamores boss I saw the day before. After shooting a couple of arrows at it and realising I only did 1 damage per hit, I thought my companion will carry me which I promptly watched it get one shot in the face, so I proceeded to run for my life. After running in a massive circle away from this beast, I came to the really sad conclusion that I wasn't even fighting the Mamores boss I thought I was, it was just a regular Mamores. This is how weak I was in this world, and after realising that, I went home, built some beds for my humans, and then proceeded to try out what my new uh, companion was like, and we sadly came to the realisation he couldn't do any damage. This was quite regrettable, so I went back up to the top of the hill, and luckily the first survivor was there again, so I started the violence, threw a ball, and hoped for the best. After capturing my next human, I again thought instead of trying to flee the police, I'd try my best at fighting them. After doing one damage a hit, it ended the same as always, and I then continued the rest of that evening in base, getting more wood, more stone, and crafting up as much arrows as I could ready to fight on the day ahead. For day 5, I started by getting my revenge on one of these night owls. Since I was getting better with the mechanics of the game, this fight went a lot easier. I then replaced the arrows I just used on the owl and started travelling down the hill to gain more resources for my repairs, for my armour and equipment. I then came across what I can only assume is a glitch for the game, but it did give me a bit of a chuckle. 
after that fun swim, we went a bit further away from home than we had before and came into this big open area with a large tower in front of us and I had a look at the new pals that I was about to run into and decided it was best to go climbing instead. So I climbed the hill that I'd just gone under and got some chests and then decided to Assassin's Creed my way back down. After doing this though, in the area that I was used to, one of these deers had spawned and it went as well as you can imagine. After another defeat for the day, I decided I was just going to spend the day farming up resources and we move on to day 6. As you can see, we just started the day with a nice swim slash run in the water over to this giant skeleton where we found a chest on it. From there, we started killing the pals that were in the proximity to it and travelled back to the mainland to continue gaining as much experience as we could. We'd hit level 8, so I wanted to keep trying to gain as much as we could to try and reduce that difficulty curve. But that's where we had this interesting encounter where this fox accidentally hit the boss and... Let's just say the Mamoress wasn't too happy with him. Shortly after this fight, we found this llama wearing stilettos and luckily enough it got stuck for me which made it a little bit of an easy kill, but sadly it didn't really give such a great reward in the experience compared to killing some of the weaker enemies. After this we went back to the home base as I needed to start resupplying and repairing my gear as my armour was completely shot through by this point. So we did some repairs, got some more arrows building, did a little bit more cooking and we actually ended the day there. Swiftly into day 7 we continued on that XP grind. With me and my companions now gaining a lot more experience, it meant these fights were easier, especially on these lower level enemies. I wanted to use them to train me on being better at paying attention to my peripheral vision as a lot of the harder enemies would be in groups. With this also in mind, I went to go and collect my next companion as more people in my party would only make these fights easier. I didn't sadly catch the rest of that footage, but we did get that person onto our team and as soon as I made it back to the base, we started getting raided by these syndicates. So we started this fight and I weakened two of them down and continued to start throwing the pal spheres, hoping that we could maybe bolster our forces and have a few more people on the team. And with this it looks like Lady Luck was on our side as we managed to capture both of them at the same time and finished off the rest of the raiders. I quickly had a look at my full now assembled team, gave them a few names so I knew which one was which and then went out to hunt a few pals to see if my new companions could do damage which luckily for me they could which meant that they were going to be viable to use. So I did a few more fighting in the local area and then honestly spent the rest of this day back at the base cooking more food, crafting more arrows, trying to make sure that we could have a full day of farming going ahead into day 8. Day 8 started the same way day 7 ended. I was still mining resources and crafting more arrows ready for the day ahead. I was of course fighting any enemies that came close to my home base and this did knock me over level 9 in the night and that was great. There was one issue though. It was becoming more prevalent that I was starting to not struggle as much in these fights which was fantastic. But the only thing I had noticed is me having to constantly craft things was keeping me from being able to go out and get more experience so I did some revamping in the base, made some more primitive workspaces so I could have the people at my base craft some supplies while I was out running around. I then leveled the base up to level 4, continued gaining a few more resources to set off some more arrows to craft and then found out there was a wheel that gave me a command that I could pet my companion even though it looked like I was trying to essentially turn her on. I then went and fought some more llamas and stilettos. These fights were definitely getting easier now that I was getting better with my dodge timings and after taking a few of these downs we moved into the new area. With the note I was making the day before that these would be more group enemies so there was a lot more things to pay attention to and dodge. So my training the day before was helping out a bit as I was able to navigate around the fights a bit easier and by the end of this day of fighting my way through this area I came across my next waystone and that unlocked fast travel location number three. I continued to spend this night just looking around the local area and came across this pal capture camp with a few more of these syndicate thugs. I decided that it would be best to give it a go and continued to start firing my way into the camp but sadly ran out of arrows as I'd been out training all day. So it meant I had to start going in with melee and I was trying to be very careful to not be hit with these guns knowing how much damage they could do. 
thought it was about time to catch one of these, which went very well. Finally, this thug remained in the ball, which at the same time my companion had finished the final one in the camp, so we were successful over this event. I then went over to the pal in the camp and saw this hold release pal button. For anyone that's actually played this game knows exactly what's about to happen, for anyone else, have a watch. I was distraught. By actually releasing this, it meant that I actually captured the pal. It meant my run was over. Or so I was contemplating. With me actually releasing this pal and it going into my inventory, I hadn't actually used it because it went straight to the box. And I saw this more as a lost dog that follows you around as I didn't actually actively try to capture it. It just joined my team and decided to follow me along. So I put it in the box and decided I was going to keep this run going. But if I ran across any more of these bases, I was going to be leaving them in the cages. With the awful night eight put behind me, I continued the evening mining up rocks and cutting down trees to be able to replenish all of my arrows I just spent. So I spent the whole day doing this, I would kill any pals that had come in the local proximity to the base, cooked up some food to make sure that me and my workers wouldn't go hungry, and had them constantly stood at the workbenches crafting as many arrows as possible as I actually had a goal in mind for today, as when I was running around the other day the massive tower had an entrance button on it. I was curious to see what was inside, so after crafting up some arrows I decided to head over and decided to head into the tower. I had unknowingly walked straight into a boss battle, a boss with over 30,000 health. I didn't of course have the tools or the items to be able to fight this at the time, but I had to give it a go. I didn't know of any way of getting out of here and I didn't know if I was going to lose all my items if I died because I drop everything on death. So with this in mind, I had my companions taking as much aggro as I could as I launch as many arrows, but sadly I had no knowledge of the boss's attack patterns and because of this, it meant I didn't know how to avoid or when to dodge and this sadly became my downfall in the fight. With another defeat under my belt, I headed back to the tower and luckily my items were outside of it, so it meant I didn't have to rebuild everything, which was fantastic news. I did sadly have to go back and repair everything, but that was fine. I did some inventory management and was going to build up my base a little bit more for the day, but the game had other ideas for me instead. With another raid on its way to my base, I prepped as well as I could and the syndicate thugs came back down the hill and I fought and weakened them and tried to capture as many as I could. With me managing to catch one, I had then thrown a ball at the second one which I had been trying to capture the whole time and luckily that one stayed in the ball as well. I then had one last thug that was trying his best to run away, so I followed him up the hill. Well, I threw a pal sphere at his head and he kept breaking free, but I managed to capture him in the long run and return back to my base. But this had sadly cost me a lot of time as it was nearly the end of day 9. As much as this day had been very eventful and a lot had happened, I just needed to build up my supplies again so I went straight through to mining resources for the rest of the night. With day 9 behind us I started by fighting this weird grassy dinosaur that had wandered into my camp. 
I thought with it being in my camp's proximity, maybe my people and workers would help me fight. I kept trying to dodge as many attacks as I could, but realised that this wasn't going as planned as the area of effect attacks were killing all of my followers. Due to this, I decided it was time to flee again. I ran up to the top of the hill, waited for it to follow me and jumped back down into the river, thinking this would hopefully make its pathing lose me. But sadly, to my surprise, as soon as I came out the river, it was ready. I kept trying to run as much as I could, but decided the only way away from this thing was going to be to fight, as it knocked down another one of my followers. So, I went with the spear and swiftly got taken down. After this, I had to put in my dead followers and my dead workers into the PAL box so they could heal, which takes over 10 minutes. So I repaired all my gear, which had just been broken and newly repaired from the night before, crafted a bunch of more arrows, which my lovely followers had done for me, and then proceeded to go back out and start gaining some more experience. If the tower and the dinosaur had taught me anything, is I was still majorly underleveled, and I needed to try and change that. Whilst roaming around and killing the enemies, I found a cave which I had apparently missed, and even even my live recording self was surprised. Wait, how did I miss this massive cave? With this, I decided to go into the cave and start an adventure as this was a dungeon which I could do. Once entering, I threw down my companions and started fighting the enemies within. I started fighting new enemies I hadn't seen before, but I was at least getting quite aware of what most of their attack patterns would be that they always have a melee and a ranged attack for the normal enemies. So with dispatching these I ran through the cool looking dungeon, found some chests along the way, I even found one that had a copper key in it which I needed for that red chest outside. But with this also in mind I continued through the dungeon, fighting off the thugs and the people inside, mining some of the materials which were found within the dungeon's caverns, and found my way to the boss room. After entering the boss room, I threw out my companion and started sniping away, thinking if I had the distance, maybe they wouldn't be able to aggro onto me. I was sadly mistaken though, as I got hit by an ice bolt to the face and then nearly fell to my death. I continued trying to evade, but realised I was in a horrible position for this fight, and swiftly died due to this. After respawning out of the cave and going back and getting my items, we were actually into day 11. So I headed straight over to that red chest and found an old bow schematic, which I thought the old bow was rubbish, but this was a rare schematic. So I was hoping that meant this bow would do more damage than the regular old bow. So I went straight to my base, found it in the area. It didn't really give me much details on the damage, but I needed these ancient civilization parts to craft it, and with no knowledge of how to get it, I decided to go back to the dungeon and it was now shut. Since the dungeon was shut, I proceeded to start going up the stairs and fighting some more enemies to get some more experience, as, as much as I did okay in the dungeon, I still was really hurt and needed a lot of repairs by the end of it. So I travelled around the local lands, killing all the enemies that I could, finding some new pals along the way again, and continued down the riverbed. After following the riverbed around, it took me back to the area I was used to and I saw this weird goat, grass, ball, bushy monster. So with it being a new encounter, I decided to give it a go. It did get a few hits on me, but I did start learning its attack patterns and was able to start getting some good dodges in, and we managed to take it down. Again, the only issue is as much as this fight was hard and rewarding, it didn't give enough experience to make it worth the resources. I continued into the new lands, found some chests along the way, and continued travelling to see what I could find. I came across some old castle-like runes again, picked up some more of these history cards, and whilst looking around the cliff edge, came across the best thing I could currently find for my run. I jumped off the cliff and paraglided straight into the small settlement. I first started talking to all the people inside of it, see if they would give me anything or tell me anything useful. I then found that there was a fast travel point within the town, so I instantly went straight over there in case anything attacked me and killed me, so I had a way of getting back because I was quite far away from my home base now. After travelling around the town, I actually found the merchant. I had a look at his wares and noticed he didn't really have anything as far as a weapon upgrade for me, but he did have some arrows and I kept that in mind for maybe later on. I 
then sold the few things that I could sell to him, went and clicked onto my technologies and whilst I'm trying to get this old rare bow, realised I had a free shot bow which I could craft right now. So with that in mind I went straight back to my base and started crafting the free shot bow. I put it on the table to begin the crafting process, had one of my followers start making it, while I started getting resources for the furnace I'd also just unlocked, as this would be my next skill tree of items that I'd be able to unlock and do more damage with. As soon as the bow was ready though I shot it and was delighted to see it was in a vertical fashion and then got to building the furnace, but do you remember a few days ago I told you that I was going to explain something in a few days? I also then started crafting my first shield of the run, but it was also going to be my last shield of the run and I'll touch on that point in a few days time. This was the reason. To use the furnace you need a fire pal to do so, which I can't catch a one. So the furnace and all of its unlockables are useless to me. I'm stuck in a primitive state. <sighs> After wasting the evening of day 11 by using the bed, I continued the adventure on day 12. I went down into some new areas and fought some syndicate thugs using my new bow and making some swift easy work of them. After this I picked up the spoils from the fight and continued adventuring. My hopes were that I'd maybe find a merchant that would sell the iron ingots I need so I could still craft these items, or have some form of automatic smelter or city or civilization that already has a fire pal working so I don't have to tame one and I stay within the rules. Whilst exploring though I found this weird grass looking squirrel thing and it was very tanky with what I was trying to do so I continued trying to hunt it down. My only issue was my free shot bow didn't of course do enough damage so I started returning back the way I went and I was met by a mini boss that came and started sniffing me. So I decided maybe it was time to try my luck on this. I kept weaving in and between the rocks to hope to get some angles on this without it being able to hit me as it managed to hit me once and took a lot of my health and my shield away. I kept dodging where I could and fired off some shots every chance I could get. I even went and hid on top of the rock at one point thinking maybe it wouldn't be able to see me. Sadly, the chiller had wised up and quickly sniped me from on top of the rock. After losing the fight I went back and grabbed my stuff and saw that was actually a dungeon open nearby. I went into the dungeon, explored it through its caverns and made my way to the boss room, which I saw it was a fire boss. So I put on my fireproof robes that I had crafted and began the fight. Yeah. I started by taking down the small followers as this would make the fight a lot easier. Whilst my companion had the aggro though, I thought I'd be safe at the side, but I was hugely mistaken. After losing this fight, I fast travelled back to where I died, picked up my gear and, and instead of heading back into the dungeon, I decided it was time to go home. But in the way was another one of these syndicate bandit camps where the downfall of the free shot bow finally came around and I accidentally hit a deer whilst trying to kill the humans that were trying to tame them. And this defeat screen was the end of day 12. For day 13 we started by getting a raid on the base and we finished these off quite quickly and moved on to our next adventures in the day. We started by crafting up some more arrows and actually increasing the amount of workload that I can have done at once. Now with three primitive workbenches I can have three items all crafting at once and leaving the people at home to do it for me. I then started levelling up number one to make them a little bit more tanky as the one issue I was having is they were dying a bit too quick. I actually helped crafting some of the arrows myself and then continued to gain some more resources and level up the base which we managed to get it all the way up to level 6.
once we moved back into a dungeon and proceeded to work our way through there. We managed to get all the way over to the boss room quite quickly in this one and we were then encountered by a giant chicken. With this fight I decided to focus on the small followers first and then move over to the boss afterwards. The fight was getting quite intense as I accidentally hit the inventory key instead of dodging which meant I was one hit away from death but luckily my follower had managed to take the aggro so I could finish off the chicken and we could win the fight. And this is where I found my first piece of ancient civilization. I now knew where I could get these from to start making the next bow that I needed but on my way out I went into the loot room, opened up my two chests and managed to get a defense medallion which is going to help me take less damage in the long run. After finishing off the dungeon and taking my spoils, I left the dungeon and continued on my adventures for the day. This proceeded with me getting into a few scuffles with some of the locals in the area around a bandit camp. They were all seeming to fight each other, so I just picked off who was left. On my way back to home base, I actually noticed the first dungeon was back open, so instead of doing so, I decided that this was going to be my next stop. I went through the dungeon, managed to get a few more chests from the loot rooms inside, kill a few more of the enemies roaming about and made my way to the boss room. To my surprise, in the boss room was a Dinosum. This was the same beast that I tried to fight a few days prior and it put me down into my place very quickly. Whilst I was trying to keep my distance, I managed to get hit by one of its AoE attacks where I then got entangled with roots which stopped me from being able to move properly and dodge, meaning that I was wide open for its next attack. I then made my way back to where I just died, picked up my gear and my companions and tried the dungeon again. Made my way to the boss room but had no luck. And I then tried again. And returned for a third time. And sadistically decided to come back for a fourth. After being put into my place way too many times, I decided it was time to start resupplying. So I went back to base, crafted up some arrows, realised I needed some materials, got what I needed and headed back into the dungeon. Started seeing an enemy I hadn't seen before, and whilst trying to get some space to be able to do some damage, I was swiftly dispatched once again. I then went back into the dungeon one more time after this, continued to start fighting and doing what I could. Luckily some of the enemies were getting stuck on some lower platforms and my companion was able to finish the fight for me. While this was great, it meant I had my second ancient civilization part so I could now craft the bow I was waiting to do. I of course then hit up the loot room, took my spoils from defeating this dungeon and proceeded to continue. I then went back to the base and found the items that I needed to make the bow and realised I didn't have enough resources for it. So I spent the rest of the evening for day 15 and the start of day 16 getting up the resources I needed and bolstering up my stockpiles again. After having everything I needed for the bow I crafted it and went to try it out on some of the local pals and realised I could now 2 and 3 hit some of them. This was a massive jump in my damage. There were some chests nearby as well which I went to promptly loot and continued to resupply the wood I just used making the bow, leveled up the base level 7 and then tried out the woodcutting pal farming build that you make and realise it's useless unless you have a pal to do it for you. I then used this evening to actually go roam around Galeria and see if there was anything new for me to find in the world. After running into a few chests and a few enemies I hadn't seen before, I started crossing this large bridge, noticed that there was a bandit camp across from it, so promptly decided to take a turn in the opposite direction, then came across an abandoned mineshaft. After reaching the abandoned mineshaft I realised it was way too dark for me to see in here so definitely turned around and left straight away but there was a nice little green squirrel collectible for me to get and a chest to the side of me and actually took us into the dawn of day 17. 
he started roaming some of the other areas that I had started coming across, came in contact with a large fight going on between some pals and some capturers, tried to capture one myself and then accidentally shot him in the head and watched him go down like a sack of potatoes. I then found another dungeon and started crafting some arrows ready to go inside. Once inside, I proceeded through the dungeon as usual, collecting the chests along the way. After collecting these, I made my way to the boss room and this time using the new bow which did a lot more damage, I felt a little bit more confident. I managed to get some distance away from the boss so I had a lot more time to dodge and the companion was able to keep him there so I could keep sniping the damage. It meant it was an easy fight so we looted the loot room, managed to get another defense medallion and moved on. On my way back out though I came across another poacher's camp and instead of releasing this one I tried to kill it hoping that it meant it would disappear but as soon as it hit zero health it just stayed there. So we left the fire lion thing with no health in the cave and went back home to continue building back up. We were then raided though and this was by Palworld's kind of furry fan rule 34 monster so we're just gonna not give it too much time on the screen. So after we pretend that didn't happen, I repaired the rest of my items and we moved into day 18. I leveled up the base level 8 and then sadly came the realisation that that's as far as we'll go because we need metal to build any of the next things. So with that in mind, I went over this bridge and went back to fight the large chillet that I had struggled with a few days prior. I continued to keep trying to weave in between the rocks but the chillet had another idea. With that embarrassing defeat under my wing, I went back, collected my goods and started the fight again. This time knowing it could climb the rock, I decided I'd fight in the open. And for me, this worked a lot better as it gave me so much more room to dodge and to get the hits that I needed to. And with that we actually killed our first world boss and because of this guy giving me such a hard time I definitely gave it the burial it deserved. After this we moved on and kept exploring the lands, found some more chests, climbed some more rocks and actually then went back to base for the rest of the evening crafting up some more supply and some storage areas, cooking some food, and then we were hit with another raid by the fangirls, which after we just pretended this didn't happen, they obviously must have heard us and have come back again. So to give them just that little bit extra screen time to hope this doesn't happen a third time, we then dispatched them and started building some stuff for the base, then went off to the small settlement and decided to start buying some arrows from the traders so I didn't have to make them anymore. Now being all stocked up, I returned home and finished the day there and we go into day 19. The dungeons were back open so I made my way inside of them, started dispatching the enemies as I did before and made my way to the boss rooms. In this room we again just fought the boss as usual, slowly powering it down with the old bow and managed to get level 13, did the loot room and then we went back and sold the spoils to buy more arrows. With this now seeming to be my routine of doing a dungeon to sell an item to buy more arrows to explore more, that's kind of what I started doing. So I came towards these castle ruins, explored a bit, found another fast travel point and continued on my way. After exploring the land a lot, I then went back to the base for the end of the day, organised my inventory, did some cooking, and we moved into day 20. For the start of the day, we crossed into some new areas again. Sadly, these were areas with much higher level enemies than what I could deal with, so I did spend most of the time watching and seeing what was going on in the world. I did try my chance at a fight and managed to kill one, but with seeing how much damage they did to my companion, I thought it best that we try and leave straight away. 
After running around a bit more, we found some more chests and I found another fast travel point, so I made my way towards it, but sadly didn't realise that the enemies in this area actually will aggro as soon as they see me. So my shield took a hit for me while I quickly tried to fast travel out there as soon as I could, picked any fast travel location that I could and started just moving in a direction again. I then was able to come across another fast travel station and even the sealed realm of the Frozen Wings dungeon, which I definitely went straight into without thinking about it. Once in here I started the fight when a bunch of penguins spawned and I was slowly watching my companions die one after the other while I tried to constantly keep avoiding the penguins blasts. After running around the room and avoiding the boss as well I kept fighting off the small minions to be able to then slowly focus on the boss. After all the minions were gone we were able to start focusing on the boss. I was only down to one companion left by this point, so I had to be careful about when I decided to deploy him. I did do so in the middle of this fight and sadly he died too so I was down to just me and the boss and luckily he dived and went straight into this pillar which made it an easy few of glass headshots and secured me the win. I left the dungeon and went back to my base as I had 5 companions all down and I needed to get them healed, which takes 10 minutes to do so, so I went to base and it's like they knew I was on my own. So I took position on the hill ready to snipe down on them as they were coming up to the base. This worked really well for me though because only two managed to make it to my base area in general, so I easily dispatched them off without any need for resistance. I checked on to see how much longer they had until they were back up and with it being a while I'd spent the night cooking. Day 21 was honestly a relaxing day. I just moved around into some new areas I hadn't been to yet. I found a dungeon, I made my way through it and got into the boss room and proceeded to defeat the boss without even needing my companions. I was getting quite used to the actual mechanics that I needed for this game now. So after defeating it I went into the loot room and proceeded back on my journey to see what I could find. I stopped off for a quick snack break but was promptly back on my journeys and I'd spent the whole day doing so, I was luckily enough found, able to find a waystone towards the end of the day so I could fast travel home and that's all that would happen of any noteworthiness unless you want to acknowledge human trafficking. For day 22 there was something quite interesting that I saw on the map which was a giant llama so I obviously wanted to go see if I could take on this level 23 behemoth. So I started off with the llamas wearing stilettos and moved on to the boss but sadly I couldn't do anything more than one damage per hit to him no matter which bow I used so I tried with the triple bow for quite some time and lost a few companions but it just wasn't gonna work. I was burning through too many arrows and it seems like the llama agreed too as we both just called it quits. After that there was a dungeon nearby so I went into there, climbed inside, destroyed the boss again and went and took my spoils of war, moved back on, went to the merchant, sold all the spoils, bought more arrows and went back to my base to let the people that had just died to the llama start healing back up. But I even started doing some crafting at home which I usually don't do anymore. But I decided I was going to do something for day 23 so I went back to the merchant and bought a lot more arrows to be prepared for first thing in the morning as it was going to be a very eventful day. Yes, I returned to the tower. I wanted to give this boss another go. Now that I'd got some better weapons and had the triple bow and the old rare bow, I thought maybe I'd had enough damage now to do this. I continued to keep hitting the boss as much as I could on every chance I could get, but the timer was not going in my favour. I wasn't able to put out enough damage and it was becoming very blatantly obvious as this went along. I managed to get down to 3 minutes and I hadn't even got him down to half hell. With this in mind, I knew it was going to be a defeat, so I quit trying to do damage to save up some arrows and, and let it take its course. 
I then returned to the base and put all of my people into the system because I had actually heard of a city that may have been able to assist me in getting a gun. So I put everything away, killed myself so I could respawn on one of the other spawn points and set off on a naked journey. I stopped at one point when it was getting late at night to make a torch to make sure I didn't freeze to death and continued on my way, crossing some really weird landscapes which I of course hadn't seen before yet as I was used to the greenery and even the redness of the land, not the deserts and the weird stony metal cubes, but there it was in the distance, that there was a town and a waypoint. I had found the fishing village which I had been told about by a friend of mine. And I instantly went in and went and spoke to the merchant and there it was. He sold a gun and a crossbow. Knowing that this was now going to be my next goal, I went back to my house and went and started hunting out for some dungeons. And this is what I did for the next few days. <laughs> And there it was. I defeated every dungeon that I could currently find in the last couple of days and I had enough for the handgun. I went and bought it and bought as much ammo as I possibly could, returned to my base to see how much I had in total, realised I was going to need a bit more than this. I then thought I would, should definitely increase my armour as well, so I made the best armour I possibly had at the moment, tried out the pistol and was pleasantly surprised with the damage it could do. Knowing what I needed to do now, I continued my farming to get as many bullets before I took on the tower again. And there we were, day 29. I started the day by crafting some arrows and had to deal with a raid that came over to the base and we dispatched that as quick as we could to continue with the crafting. As, as much as I had some pistol bullets, I needed to make sure I had a strong amount of arrows set aside in case of the worst happening and I wasn't able to finish the fight in time. I then did some exploring, did my final load of course ammo purchase at the vendor and that was the last I was going to see this place of this run. I then decided to spend the rest of the day just venturing around the areas I haven't seen yet and I actually spent the whole day doing this as there was no more pressure of me having to do more and do as much as possible as I was happy with my progress and I felt ready for this fight. With that in mind, I went back to the base, finished off the final arrows, and this is the gear set that we're running into day 30 with. We have the blue bow, the blue headpiece, two defense medallions, and of course a spear and the other bow set aside with the handgun. And with everything as ready as it could be, we headed to the tower for our final fight. And we were in. 
the pistol was great, the damage was high, the fire rate was better than the bow, so this should have been a breeze. We of course still had to be careful of all the damage the boss could do, so we had to keep kiting it around. I continued to pepper as many bullets into its head as I could by still avoiding its attacks to make sure that I didn't have to go down as the boss could still kill me in two hits. I used the bow when I had long range as an option, as I didn't want to use all of my ammo whilst he was further away as, as there seemed to be a bit of damage drop off at further ranges. I was starting to run out of ammo, I only had three bullets left. With all the bullets gone it was now back down to the bow, there were still three minutes left in the fight though so it was still possible. I continued firing where I could, and as soon as the boss turned the corner... That was it. We'd beaten the final boss, and by final boss I mean the first boss, but the final boss for these 30 days had been an adventure, and we'd done a lot, died a lot, and progressed quite well saying we couldn't use any pals at all. The world was still very fast and I hadn't even discovered most of it as there were towers in the distance so if you enjoyed this world and you want to see some more please let me know. But other than that all I can say is thank you for sticking with the video and watching it to the end and I hope you enjoyed.